ridiculous. Gwen and Charles Scale. I don't even need to repeat that title. People get ready. If there's one person here who don't know that song, I'm going to ask you to go to YouTube or something and look it up because that song by the Impressions was a very special song for many of us. It was a time period when we were looking at changes in our lives. It was a song when we realized that in order for us to go forward, we had to get ready. And it so adequately fit the title of my talk, which is Stop the Blame, Get in the Game, and the part that's missing is Game On. This talk is really about a time period, an epic time period of where we are in our life today. Because we have blamed so many people along the way. We became stagnant in our world today, and we're at a critical epic point where we now must rise to the occasion, where we must be prepared to step forth and do the work that is being called for us to do. So often we can look around and find others to blame or reasons as to why we shouldn't do something or could not do it. But now it's all on our shoulders and I'm going to take a moment to get centered because this is a talk that I have to put myself in the middle because I am like so many others, we had to find some reason to blame others. But let me get centered as I do every Sunday. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. And for this I say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is a wonderful book whose stories are filled with opportunities to learn. If we study this book, we'll find that inside it is a collection of history, metaphors, metaphysical understanding that takes us into the journey of a wonderful placement of life. But the stories themselves will help us to understand how to move beyond our own problems. And this particular story that I'm going to share with you is a story about a young man known as Joseph. If you had this book with you, I would tell you to turn to Genesis as we review the 37th chapter to the 50th chapter. I'm not going to cover all the books because it's a wonderful long story, so some I'm going to capture in a way to try to bring forth this message. So I'm going to use this particular story because when I began to research the title and this theme, I said, where in the Bible can I find a place but there existed a man who didn't try to blame others for what was taking place in his life, yet he had challenges placed before him. Now, I'm not sure if you knew the story of Joseph, but let's just say that Joseph, who was the son of Jacob, and Joseph was a young man who was favored and loved by his father, and his brothers sensed it, and they had jealousy for him. If we were just to take the part of the 37th verse, you find that Joseph was also what we call a dreamer. He had vision that came to him. And Joseph had a dream one day when he told it to his brothers and they hated him all, his, all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. And we were binding shells of grain out in the field when suddenly one shell rose up and stood upright while the, your shelves talking about their grain, gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream. Joseph was born in a, say, a mixed family relationship. He was a son of 